Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Today's matchup features a couple of big targets who will be looking to get open in the middle of the field. It's the Bengals going up against the Jaguars. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Larry, the fans in teal and black are ready to lock down the bank as you get a look inside Everbank Field in Jacksonville, Florida. A few minutes prior to us coming on air, this crowd was jolted into action with the introduction of these Jaguars. They're set for football as the Jags are ready to match up with Andy Dalton and the Cincinnati Bengals. Hello again, everybody. I'm Brandon Gunn here in the booth. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And you know, Charles Larry took a moment to highlight a couple of the tight ends that we're going to see in this game. Both of these teams really look to get them involved in the offense early and often, don't they? And we continue to see in the NFL how the tight end is becoming more and more of a highlighted position. Some of these guys can flex out like wide receivers. A lot of them can come inside, block as well as catch passes. He's exactly right. Tight end, that's a position we'll continue to follow as this game unfolds. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out onto the field comes Jacksonville's offense, and Blake Bortles has to be feeling good after what he did against Indianapolis last week in the shutout win. Threw for 330 yards, scored a touchdown. It was a really good performance for him. Not only does he have to feel good about it, how about the team, the organization as a whole? Because that's the Blake Bortles that they need. A guy who can hit the big passes, take care of the football, limit the turnovers, the guy that they need to lead this team, and he showed up this, on, this past Sunday. Bortles now on first down. Looking and finding Allen Hearns. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. Shifty footwork gets him a little extra on the play. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Throwing now is Bortles. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Offensively, as we see the starters for the Jags, a crew last week without Leonard Fournette, but the running game, it still stepped up, didn't it? It certainly did because T.J. Yeldon, who they had drafted in prior years to be that lead running back, he put up 128 yards and a 58-yard touchdown run on just nine carries. Also supplemented by Blake Bortles having a big day throwing the ball with 330 yards. So this is a team now that realizes they'll rely on their defense, want their offense to control the game running it, and that means head coach Doug Marone not letting his ego get in the way, playing the way that they need to play to win ball games. An early test. Two plays in. This is third and two. Now the rookie first rounder from LSU. It's Leonard Fournette. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. It goes as a gain of eight that moves the chains. Faced with their first third down conversion opportunity and able to punch it through and pick it up on the ground. And to me, doing it on the ground sends a different type of a message than throwing the football. And, you know, let's face it, we've done a lot of games together. How often have we seen third down turn into an automatic passing down no matter what the yard is? Yeah, and last thing you want, that opening drive to go three and out. You got everything scripted lined up let's get some points on the board and they're able to avoid that three and out and that'll set them back five still first down
After the penalty, it's Fournette. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. That one good for 10 yards. And it'll be a second down. And Leonard Fournette impressing there with that run. It's hard to believe that no Jacksonville Jaguar has broken 1,000 yards since Maurice Jones drew in 2011. I think Leonard Fournette could be that guy. Even with the ankle injury last year at LSU, still averaged six and a half yards per carry. And absolutely intimidated opposing defenses. A lot of guys simply didn't want to tackle him. First carry for Chris Ivory. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. Fresh set of downs here. Portals on the give to Fournette. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. A gain of three, second down. And the Bengals starting defensive unit now. A former first-round pick, Drake Kirkpatrick had to divide his time in Cincinnati before he became a starter. But since then, he's become one of the key players on their defense. And they made him a priority in free agency. They lost a few other guys, but made sure that they locked him down with a brand-new contract. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still second down. And here comes play number six on this drive. Again, it's Fournette. <laughs> and they'll get him down here at about the 42. And he's able to get more than half of what they needed. That brings up a third and five. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Here comes the seventh play of this opening drive. They've moved it well, but here's third down. Throwing his Bortles. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Brad Nortman in his sixth year in the league on to punt it away. Back deep for the Bengals, Adam Jones. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Here comes Cincinnati's offense. Andy Dalton will lead them. And coming off their second loss to the Steelers this season, now the Bengals at 2-4. and four. And it, it was a tough day for Dalton. Finished 17-30, 140 yards. And what was the number you said about the second half for the Bengals? Yeah, only 19 total yards in the second half. Couldn't run the ball effectively, and that's a big part of the Bengals' offense. They've got to get that part figured out because without that run game, Andy Dalton's effectiveness really is decreased. Lead, lead. 
Now the rookie from Oklahoma, it's Joe Mixon. And he is going to be knocked flat on his back. Oh, a big hit. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. They'll stay on the ground, mix it again. And he works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. Here's the defense for Jacksonville, or get ready, pun haters, Saxonville, after they had, what, 10 sacks this last week in their win over Indianapolis? 10 against Indianapolis, which absolutely totally disrupts any type of offense you're trying to run. Jacoby Brissett under siege the entire game. They got 33 sacks now in the season. That leads the league. The second place team, the Pittsburgh Steelers with 24. And remember, Pittsburgh is also known as Blitzburg. Blitzburg. So if they can be Blitzburg, <laughs> Jacksonville could definitely be Saxonville, and that type of pass rush, could they could ride that all the way to the playoffs. They'll try and pick it up by running the option to the right, and he'll get this up only to about the 33. He'll get a couple of yards on the keeper, but it's going to lead to a fourth down. And if you like defensive football, focus on the defensive end on this play. He does everything exactly right, reads the play, and makes sure he spills it for a small gain. Now the left-footed punter in his ninth year, Kevin Huber on to kick. Back deep for the Jaguars, Marquise Lee. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. And not great starting field position here for the offense. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette spinning away. And some room for him there as he'll take this up to about the 15. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. Second down, here's Fournette. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 12-yard line. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable. And you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? Now defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. So the offense needing four yards, it's third down. Turtles now to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And out of bounds across the 15-yard line. A pickup of five that time and a first down. 
Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. So here we go, first and 10 now. A handoff to Fournette. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. to throw on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. The Jaguars on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and nine. From the gun, it's Bortles. And some room to maneuver. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. And here comes play number six on this drive. Fournette, a first down carry. He finds an opening past the 40. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. But there's a reason he was the first running back taken. You saw the ability there, the ability to be physical and get downhill. And how about him break it off a nice gang there? There's some Adrian Peterson comparisons out there now. That's high praise. Do you think that they're warranted? Running style, very similar. So to be first down here after the run. They keep it with Fournette on first down. And he's going to be brought down inside the 45 at the 43. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. See if they stay on the ground for second down. the counter to Ivory. And an alley to run. And he's going to get this inside the 30. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. Back to the ground on first down. Again, Ivory. And he's going to bring this one down to right about the 20-yard line. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. Snap comes at one, and it's Bortles. And incomplete on the deep ball. 
The veteran tight end Mercedes Lewis, the intended receiver, and it's third and short. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss him? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he'll at least get him inside the red zone here, down to about the 19. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. Now, that was a big-time play by the defense. They as well knew where the first down line was, and they didn't let them get anywhere near it. So on fourth down, Doug Marone going to send out his field goal unit. From the left hash, it's a 36-yard attempt. And Lambo will put this one through. And the Jaguars grab a 3-0 lead. So they get three. They were hoping for six. And unlucky number 13 play drive. Well, you go to the sideline after putting three points on the board. Happy. But you wanted to be ecstatic. You wanted to have six on the board. On the opposite sideline, though, the defense, I think they're high-fiving each other, only giving up three after letting them run that much offense. After the main field goal, back out Lambo to kick this one off. Fielded about a yard deep. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. with a run by Mixon. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. Second down, offense behind the sticks here. Second and 13. Again, it's Mixon. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll force upon him a third and 14. One thing rookies need to learn at this level and quick, make a cut, be decisive, and go. Because in college, you could dance around and wait for a hole to open because you're probably a better athlete than most of the guys on the field, but not on the NFL level. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Now, prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. 3-0 is our score. More from Jacksonville after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, and it's the Bengals with a football to begin quarter number two. They do, however, have a tough third and long coming up. Out of 
of the gun. It's Dalton. This one grabbed by A.J. Green. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. It's a pickup of 13, but they're still a bit short, and it'll be fourth down. Great change up there on the route and got that inside release, made it a successful pitch and catch. Well, the first thing you want to do is have him thinking that you're going outside, make a move in that direction. Then you really don't run the route against the whole body of the defender. You run against a half of him and the inside half, and he took it right across his face, got inside, and won that route in a big way. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. The Jags and Leonard Fournette making their way onto the field. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys <laughs> have an innate sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. They begin with a run by Fournette. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. They'll run it again with Fournette. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville in a first down. And this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. play fake here on first down he's going to leave this for his running back it's complete and he'll bring it up here to right at the 40 yard line call it a gain of five and that'll bring up second down i know most of the time when the ball's in the air you're thinking wide receiver tight end but running backs they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays Bortles throwing on second down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. The offense on third down tonight, they've converted three out of five thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. They run with their short yardage man, Ivory. Look at the spin. Balance. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. A Jacksonville first down on a pickup of 17. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. Stay on the ground, Ivory again. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. 
Well, that run wasn't very successful. They did have a big one on the previous play. So you get the sense that the offense is probing around, trying to find the ones that are going to work. And when they find them, they'll keep coming back to them. Second down, here's Boris. And that's incomplete. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it, sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And, yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. The Jaguars on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third down and 12. Shotgun now for Bortles. And he comes back with one complete. Oh, and they had him stopped short of the first, but a penalty marker down. And that looked like a clear face mask to me. Face mask. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march off another 15 against your squad. Going to run the draw with Fournette. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to him back. Stop will come inside the five at the four. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. First down, and that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Ben Koyak from four yards out, and the Jaguars add six to their lead. And a play fake down near the goal line here worked out well. Anytime you can make them think that you're going to run the ball and go to that play action pass, you see the end result. Usually a touchdown. Is that harder? Is the play fake harder to defend for the defense near the goal line or no? Because there's not as much room to work with. It is harder because down near the goal line, you're thinking much more of a running play, especially if people run out big formations. So it is harder to defend. A 10-play drive that time. And it culminates in a Jags touchdown. Lambeau out to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. 
And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field. And this is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. Mixon gets the nod to start the drive. A very good move, but for a relatively modest gain out near the 32. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Maybe a little sign of life here offensively, Charles. They get their first first down. They didn't have any in quarter number one. And I think what we're seeing is great evidence of good scouting by both teams, right? Understanding what they like to do, their best plays, try and take those away early. So now we're seeing some adjustments, and they end up getting their first first down. A first down throw coming for Dalton. He's going to air it out deep for Green. Into a double team and it's intercepted. Picked up by Jalen Ramsey. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. Leonard Fournette making his way back out there. He's in his own second quarter, already closing in on a 100-yard game. And that's the magic number for a running back. Anytime you get to that triple digits, that's all you're looking for. But he's got a chance to really exceed that in this one. Yeah, he does. That, that's been the gold standard for a long time, hasn't it, that 100-yard mark? It really has. And that never has to shift because it's in a game. It's a 1,000-yard mark. <laughs> I'm wondering, since we've gone from 12 to 14 to 16 games, maybe we need to up that a little. Here's a give to Fournette. And space opens a bit as he gets it across the 15 to the 17-yard line. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Check this one off to Fournette. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. Now we go now. A fake to Fournette. Now it's Bortles to throw. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. 
Well, that incompletion gives us an opportunity to talk about what some people dubbed shutout Sunday this last week in the NFL. Well, we have three shutouts that yeah. we saw? Yeah, for the first time since 2012, matched the total number of shutouts all of last season. How about Denver getting shut out by the Chargers? That's the first shutout for the Broncos since 1992, 394 games worth. So that's a big deal. The Colts, goose egg against Jacksonville. Jacksonville also put 10 sacks on them in that game. And the Cardinals went all the way to London. <laughs> Twickenham Stadium, in fact, to get shut out by their division rival, L.A. Rams. Defenses reign supreme. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. On third down, Fournette. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. This guy's well on his way now to a big game on the ground. It's another good run there. Puts him over the century mark in yardage. And we're still in the second quarter. room to operate as he'll get this up only to about the 41. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. Here we go now. Blue. On second down, Ivory. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves them needing about seven here on third down. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit on six of their eight tries. Very good. This is third and seven. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. He's got the hook up to Lee. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. First down, Jacksonville. The passing game looking sharp on this drive for the Jags. lining up first and ten. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back with more from Jacksonville. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this. A reminder coming up at halftime. Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando with our halftime report. But business to take care of before that. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Now Leonard Fournette. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. For one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave them with a third and about three to go. 
Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Here's Bortles to throw, and he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. and a timeout as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. So the offense takes the timeout and they are back out and ready to rock. throw to me I didn't see anything open and this play just didn't look right from the beginning it did not I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away dangerous pass incomplete the Jaguars on third down they've been tough to stop eight for ten so far this will be third and forever portals and down he goes they sack him back right around the 41 yard line Carl Lawson in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. As aggressive as Cincinnati is on defense, I was surprised that they only had 33 sacks last season. Yeah, bottom half of the NFL. I think that helped contribute to them not making the playoffs. Remember, they had a nice little run going. That's the first time they missed in the last six. Here's Brad Nordman now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. So we hit the halftime break here in Jacksonville with the Jags on top. As we send you a couple hours south to Orlando, let's check in with Larry Ridley for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Charles. And welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Jaguars are up right now and are looking to keep up the pressure moving forward. The Bengals just want to come out after the half and claw their way back into the game. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Now midway through the second. Portal's got the completion here, and this play goes for a score, pushing the lead to 10. Now to late in the second. Lee's wide open here on the catch, and he won't be brought down until he makes it to the 23-yard line. Still late in the first half. Lawson's going to get the quarterback here. This one ends up as a loss of six. So that'll do it from here in Orlando for the second half kickoff. Let's get back upstate to Jacksonville and Brandon Guy.
Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shot at the 23-yard line. Getting ready to go again, here's Andy Dalton marching back onto the field. And he's had some time to chew on that interception he threw on his last drive back in the first half. Well, normally we say, want well, to get him right back out on the field and play again, right? But as you mentioned, had the halftime, had to stew about it a little bit. Maybe he'll have a chance to relax a little and kind of laugh and chuckle and let it go. He'll hope to respond positively here to start the third quarter. They'll start here with a give to Mixon. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. They'll run it now out of the gun. <laughs> and they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That one good for 15, and the Bengals get a first down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Now a first down carry, it's Hill. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh-uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage will be found. establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. Dalton here from the gun. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Calais Campbell in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you get three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he's on to punt for Cincinnati. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Fournette. A nice little juke. And they're able to 
get this one across the 35. A Jacksonville first down on a pickup of 17. I know anytime you watch a team run the ball really well, there's some pinball effect, people bouncing off of each other. There's also some things of beauty in there. We see these nice, explosive, strong runs. And this guy, he knows how to carry the football really well and continually wants the football. Why? He knows the offensive line's gonna give him great effort, and he gives great effort himself to finish off runs. Play action. It's Bortles. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Oh, with that incompletion, let's have some fun for a second. Dan Bailey, Cowboys kicker, got injured last week, so they brought in their safety, Jeff Heath, to kick. Did you see this? I did, and it, it, really, it cracks me up because... When you have to bring in the emergency kicker, you're wondering, are they going to go old school and look like super toe or the square <laughs> toe and hit it straight on? Are they going to have the soccer style? Jeff Heath, the first one he makes, but the second one, <laughs> that would look like me off the tee at the golf course. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good analogy. Jeff, we love you, but you made two, but that one that he missed, if you haven't seen it, go look it up. It was quite the PAT try. But he did add five kickoffs as well. He so did. He was, he was all around that day, and they're hoping Dan Bailey heals fast. The Jaguars on third down. They've had plenty of success. Eight conversions, looking for a ninth. This time it's third and three. Here we go now. Now Fournette. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. And that's one of the few times they've been able to contain him. He's had a heck of a game, and maybe he's getting a little bit tired from how many times he's carried the ball. But I always think back to what all those old coaches say. The ball's not that heavy. Keep carrying it, kid. Here's Brad Nortman now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone you know not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. Now Dalton with a first and ten. And caught right side, green. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. They completed the screen on the perimeter, but boy, that was textbook defense, exactly as you're taught to play against a wide receiver screen, and they snuffed it out for a loss of yardage. Second down, Dalton. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 35. And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. And on this challenge, the refs have to take a peek and see whether or not the receiver was able to dot the eye with both feet. While making sure that he possesses the football all the way through the catch.
And the Bengals on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is going to be third and 13. To throw here, Dalton. Now right like side completion here by LaFowl. And they'll get him down here at the 23. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Here's Kevin Huber now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And a fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 18-yard line. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Fournette on the counter. And not a whole lot to speak of there as they'll bring him down shy of the 20. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. Second down following the run. Bortles on the give to Fournette. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. And a nickel look here for the Bengals as they try to defend this on third. Bortles going to throw. Completes it to Lee. He gets seven out of it, and he also gets a first. Play fake to Ivory. Now Bortles. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That would a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. That throw has to be a quarterback's dream, doesn't it? Big tight end, curling in the middle of the field. So it's great sight lines for him. And when they show their numbers back to the quarterback, when they sit down right there, that should be pitch and catch. down Bortles over the middle it's complete and he's able to get this one down to the 40 yard line another nice gain 16 yards there and a first down again when this offense can get their tight ends involved they can move the football here a nice route able to look it in and picks up the first down And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll run with 
Fournette. They'll wind up getting four down to the 36. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Again, it's Fournette. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. And there's a nice stop for the defense. They've had a tough time containing this guy all game long, but maybe they can build a little bit off of that play, a little bit of confidence, a little bit of momentum. Yeah, every now and then you can actually tackle that guy. Throwing his Bortles on third down. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. Geno Atkins. He's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. Here's Brad Nortman now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. tackle but then quickly brought down but a nice little gain it's a six yard gain on the ground and that'll make it second and four offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage they almost feel like he's one of them and they really embrace him it's second down Dalton looking and he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. It'll be a three-yard gain, and that'll make it third and one. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. And the Bengals on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Dalton with a give here to Mixon. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They'll stay on the ground, mix it again. He gets it forward for four, maybe five, but the flags fly. And this one could be coming back. That hold coming from the middle of the line, the center. And it's difficult for him because sometimes you've got people right over you, and as soon as you snap it, trying to get your hands up and block them, you can be a little bit late getting it done. Back 
back now in Jacksonville. It's the Bengals. They've got the football, but they trail here as we get rolling in quarter number four. fake to Mixon. This is Dalton. And the grab by Croft. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. second down over the middle and it's incomplete he was looking for his favorite target AJ Green that time third down here but pretty good coverage there and both of these defenses they've had good coverage throughout this one no doubt about it and in today's NFL where we're used to a bit more scoring this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build who's going to make the big play so Dalton now He's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Even though this offense doesn't have a single point to its name, they're not totally out of this game yet. A touchdown here, they could be in business. And how about that last play? Now they've got momentum going, so you know I'm a big advocate. Get back on the line of scrimmage. Throw another play at them while you've got them rocked on their heels. And here comes play number six on this drive. Dalton on the draw to mix him. He'll get it to the 40. Broke a tackle there to get some extra yardage. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size... This intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And the offense still has a couple plays to go to pick up the first on second down and three. Now they run with Mixon. With five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Now whistles at a flag. And I believe a Bengal got going a little early there. So that'll back him up five. Penalty on first down, backs him up five. It's now first down at 15. Out of the gun, it's Dalton. Open man is Uzama. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. 13 yards there offset some of the penalty yardage as it's second down. 
seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Nixon. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. He lost two there, and it's third down. Brandon, that play typifies what we've seen from the offense all day long. They've had no success getting things going. I think for the offensive coordinator, he's got to go to that side of the play sheet that says try something different, try some specials, something they haven't seen all day to try and get this offense kick-started. Bengals on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and four. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Neutral zone infraction. Defense. So a jump there defensively. And it's a killer. Watch the football. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. And the seemingly endless drive continues. Dalton, first and ten. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. Tyler Boyd, a 24-yard touchdown. And the Bengals have got it back to a one-score game. So very late in the game here, but with that score, some light at the end of the tunnel. There's still hope. Now they look at the score and say, hold on a second. This thing's not over yet. Let's keep battling. On for the point after is Randy Bullock. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. out now to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession. That was punt the football because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing but control the game offensively, put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. Play fake here on first down. Now look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by the Alabama man, Drake Kirkpatrick. Big boy simply cannot keep putting his team, putting his defense in these types of predicaments. He's got to take care of the football. And last season, a lot of the turnovers, just like this one, in Jags territory, 11 of the 16 really put them in a tough spot in plus territory for the opposition. 
Cincinnati now ready to take the field. Well, these guys hardly got a chance to catch their breath after the quick turnover, but I doubt they're complaining much. Especially with the field position they get to start with. I wouldn't be complaining either. I'd want to get right back out there and get after them because now you have an opportunity to make a big play. I'd say I'd let's be aggressive and go after him. the INT. Now what can Dalton do? He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. They call it a gain of 19 and it moves the chains. Right after the turnover they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change. Get out there. Stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. Ten for Dalton. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Malik Jackson busting through to get him for a loss of six. And partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? Offensive line wasn't set. There's the flag, and five yards back they go. Quarterback has to look around and make sure that his team is ready to go. Sometimes the quarterbacks go faster than is necessary. Well, the crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. Looking to throw on second down. Dalton, and he's going to go down again. Calais Campbell in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Okay, let's go back a little bit and see if my schooling comes to the front. What's that old saying? Those who forget the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them. That's the same guy who's gotten back-to-back -back sacks. I think a double team may be in order. So the sack, and now it's third and long for Dalton and the Bengals. Now Dalton. Oh, and this ball's tipped and intercepted. Picked off by Tashawn Gibson. Now he will take this all the way up past the 40-yard line. Well, there definitely was some juice on that pass. And while tight ends don't always have the same reputation for hands as wide receivers do, in this case, that ball was expected to be caught. Jacksonville as they get ready to go and last time one play interception so this offense they should be fresh <laughs> that's a good way of putting it and I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one play drive where you throw an interception a lot of people would think the very next time out run the football don't give them a chance maybe play action I think maybe you go play action show your quarterback get a little confidence in him and let him fling another one
So after the INT, it's Bortles. Lee's got it over the middle. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Fake to Fournette, now it's Bortles to throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Carlos Dunlap, he's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled, the quarterback was hit. Following the sack, third and long for Bortles and the Jags. Now a play fake, Bortles. And that is incomplete. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. Here's Brad Nordman now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. comes this field general once more leading his offense back onto the field and the interception that ended their previous drive that might be one we look back on and say that was the turning point of this game hey partner guess what there's still time for a few more turning points in this ball game they're only one score down yeah true I mean, we could have some twists and turns stay tuned They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Throw left side, complete to Ross. And he's brought down after a good game. A good pick up there, a 22. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff, didn't Yeah, they? when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. First and ten, here's Andy Dalton. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. Give him three on the play, and it'll make it a second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. To throw on second down. Dalton. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Avery Jones continuing to fight downfield. The big tackle gets him for a loss of 11. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Sack, and now it's third and long for Dalton and the Bengals. Dalton here from the gun. Underneath, this is Bernard. 
And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Call it a three-yard gain, and that's going to make it fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. Here's Kevin Huber now. He's been terrific so far. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Getting set to go again, Blake Bortles marches back onto the field with his offense. And right now, probably just one thing in his mind, it's getting back to the hot start because he's really faded. And ordinarily, when that happens, he, the quarterback, as you know, is usually the leader of the squad. Now there's probably a, a silent camaraderie that comes around him saying, hey, guess what? We got you. Don't worry about it. Let's go, big fella, because they know more times than not, he tends to pick things up, and they tend to play well. They go play action here on first down. And this is incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Now obviously that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now. Just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. And this is going to be incomplete. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Here's Brad Nortman now, standing right on his own five-yard line. that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. The offense certainly looking to score some points, but they also need ball security here late as we get down to the final moments of this one. The first down throw coming for Dalton. His throw incomplete. Brandon LaFell, his intended target, and that'll bring up second down. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw there. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Second and ten. Dalton once more. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. This is third and two. Maybe the biggest play in this football game. Eight, eight. 
Now Mixon. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They come up on a first and 10, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. Now a right side completion here by LaFell. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. A good pick up there at 20 yards. Back to throw, and he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Malik Jackson in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. He looked to throw. And he's taken to the ground, but he was pulled down by the face mask. Here come the flags, and I believe this is going to be a first down. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. So the offense has it first and ten. He's back to throw. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard. Maybe from you. I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. They'll look to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. So the sack, and now it's third and long for Dalton and the Bengals. Back to throw. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that's going to be just about all she wrote for this one. The Jags and Leonard Fournette making their way onto the field. And we have seen a decline in the numbers. Where does the fault lie? Just him? Maybe the guys up front combination? Well, as you and I both know, it's almost always a collective deal. But in this case, I think maybe the offensive line got a little overconfident. They had blocked so well in the first first half, picked up on what the defense was doing. I think we've seen an adjustment now that they have not picked up on, and now they're being a little bit overwhelmed. Hold on. 390. 390. 
Fournette, a first down carry. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. And now the Bengals are going to call another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. It's Fournette. And he'll take this one down to about the 40. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Down to a knee for the Jags. Victory seemingly in hand. Here's Brad Nortman now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. That one sails out of bounds. The side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. to throw and he can't hang on to it that would have sealed him instead second down so after all of this it comes down to one final play and just think of what it's going to be because from this distance you've got to be prepared for everything hooking laterals tip balls you name it a lot of laterals after a catch just got to be prepared, stay on your feet defensively, and tackle someone. All right, here's Dalton. He's going to let it fly. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Jaguars are winners here as we say so long from Jacksonville.